Okay, so let's see. Man, I think I need to do less FTW because it's like I played till like half an hour past and then there's like some random requests and so you don't actually start math till like 50. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, Well, okay first things first P is a fixed point right P equals X implies uh, PX equals Minus X plus three So this does actually have a real solution, right? It's like x minus 3, x squared plus 1. So I am guess, okay. There, there is in fact a unique fixed point. <sighs> if I didn't screw up. Yeah. Da -da, da -da -da, minus 3 x squared. Did I mess up? I messed up already. <laughs> this is x squared minus 1. Uh, okay, so in fact there's like 3? Oh no. There's three fixed points. Okay. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. So it's actually people are is interested in like what are the possible um, number of things. So like P, X, P of X equals X has one fixed. Um, I'm curious what P of X equals X will look like. P of P of X. So, at some point, I do think I will need to care about real solutions, because if not, then basically, like, assuming the polynomial isn't very contrived, um, I believe that, like, you'll just get powers of three or something like that. Um, didn't you mute Sohan? No, I'm too nice. Um... But I can't even see whether P of P of X equals X has real solutions or not. Um, three, one, minus one. Or uh, other than the, the existing solutions, yeah. Uh, I would, I really want to know this though, because I feel like it would be a useful foothold. So I can either like take the next few minutes and like, or I, I can plug it into Wolfram Alpha and cheat. I guess that's also something you could do. Oh. <laughs> uh, P of X. Like I, I'm curious whether how many real solutions it has because it, I don't, I hate the real numbers. X cubed minus X squared. Is there like a shift I can apply so that the answer is slightly less random? Like I feel like it's, I feel like this might be like shifted a little from like what the natural one is, but I'm not sure. Please don't Desmos. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's fine. It's just, there's like this ninth degree polynomial and you know, I know that three is a root and... They're like, yes, yeah, so there's there's a subject called a functional equation and what it usually refers to is, um... You'll know that when you see them, they're the problems that say find all functions f and then there's like this completely random artificial equation. Uh, or sometimes not so random, but a lot of them are actually just very artificial now. And you're supposed to like find all the functions that satisfy it. Um, if you want to learn about those, uh, search up intro functional equations or something, and you can find a handout I wrote. Uh, Alright, what am I going to do with this? Well, I really don't want to factor the ninth degree, but... <laughs> it, it feels like it would be such a useful foothold. Like, I really want to know whether there's like three solutions or nine solutions or however many there are. So, oh, no. <sighs> he is decently special. Yeah, I totally believe that. Um, 
Like, I can already see that it's kind of chosen so that um, P of X equals X, like, actually is solvable nicely. But I think there's probably more than that. Um, I'm gonna... When is this polynomial increasing? Let me let me start with that. Like this polynomial is has a derivative equal to three x squared minus six x equals three times x times x minus two. So it's so p is increasing from two infinity. It's increasing on minus infinity to zero. Cup to infinity and decreasing on zero two. Is this trig related? Is it going to be a trig recurrence? Oh. Oh. Oh no. Uh. You guys think it's trig? Okay. Okay. Fine. So the polynomial is very contrived. Okay. If if it's. If you want trig, you want a, a triple angle formula. Um, it's not going to happen as written with roots minus one, one, three. So I better shift it by one, right? I shift it by one. Uh, so that's the Q of X equals P of X plus one is equal to X plus one Q minus three X plus one squared plus three. When I expand this, um, now actually this is better because now the roots are minus two, zero, two. So I think I want to do this anyways. What is this pretzel rock spot? Uh, just Google it. It's actually very easy to set up. You you log in with your Twitch and then you can just play music. Uh, do I want to have it? Let, let me just shift it first and then see what happens. Um, so 3x squared minus x cubed. My, oh my god. Oh no. Wait, did I, did I mess up at expanding? I think I shifted it the wrong way. Hang on. I, I, wa I want the, the roots are minus one, one, three. I want to move them to minus two, zero, two. Uh, did I do that right? Shoot. One. Oh, no, the, the problem is I just forgot the X term. <laughs> That's why I'm like, why, why isn't this working? I, I definitely agree, though, that um, th this seems really good. And so, all right, so there's no x cube coefficient. The x, or x squared coefficient, the x cube coefficient is 3x uh, minus 2 minus 4x. That sounds wrong. Uh, do I want my, I don't want minus 4x, do I? How can derivative help solve? Like, okay, the reason I was thinking about the derivative is that one kind of thing that can happen is maybe the function is just increasing after some point. Like, if the function is increasing, like, say if I have a strictly increasing function f with a fixed point, then, like, f iterated a bunch of times equals x has a unique solution, namely the fixed point. Because if you're above the fixed point, it goes to infinity, and if you're below the fixed point, it goes to, like, minus infinity or something. It just it doesn't stabilize. So I took the derivative because I was curious, like, maybe there's some intervals for which I can just, like, do the increasing-decreasing thing. And then someone pointed out that it looked, this looks like the triple angle formula. And I was like, oh, that's probably the correct thing instead. Because it would, it would give the right form of answer. Like an increasing or decreasing thing uh, would, oh, there's no x term? Wait, what? What am I doing? Oh my god, I can't do math anymore. x cubed minus 4x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to conjugate. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, this is triple angle. This is totally a triple angle formula. Uh, <laughs> Uh, x cubed minus 4x minus 3x? No, 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 I think it's minus 4x, right? 3, 3x. Wait, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I have no clue what you said. Um, like, Okay, let, let me write this explicitly. Uh, side remark. If f is strictly increasing, then f of f of f of f is 
3x. What? Okay, what am I doing wrong? Is it not minus 4x? Is it like... Is it 6? Okay, fine. Uh, 3... 3x... I can't do this. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Uh... Plus 3x. Minus... No, it, it's minus 3x. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, I see where you're going now. Okay. And a after that painful process, we're gonna... We're, I'm gonna take your two suggestion now, because I see your triple angle formula. So... C minus 4x, right? Or 4x, 2 minus 3x. Okay, so that's the main calculation of the problem, I think. And I think all this garbage I wrote earlier doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it's still useful as a reference point, but... Um, all right, that happened. Did I forget the plus 3? Uh... Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so this, uh, I think, is the main punchline of the problem, which is that if I... If I do this substitution... Like, the point of this substitution is sort of like, I have a different variable. You, you really should think of this as, like, if y equals 2x plus 1, then, like, uh... It's 4yq minus 3y or something. In, in the sense that when I conjugate... I don't want to use the word conjugate because that's more confusing than helpful. But yeah, you can let x equals y minus one halves. Yeah, basically what happens is I think like uh, the p equation is actually this literally the same as the q equation, and the problem becomes um, q of q of y. Equals Q of Q of with A times on the left and B times on the right. Uh, yeah. So, oh, did the derivative thing actually help? Uh, well, we can take the derivative of Q. Although I guess I had the same idea with P. Um, eight Y squared minus three. No, sorry. 12y squared minus 3, which is, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just take that then. I think the derivative of p is easier to compute. So, yeah. In fact, what happens is, so it turns out that you can actually just use trig functions with complex numbers, and then you can stop. You can, when you enable yourself to do that, you don't really have to think about um, things falling outside the interval anyways. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to, you know, let y equals 2 cosine theta, or just cosine theta, actually for some theta, which might be a complex number, in fact. I don't even care at this point. And then the equation is something. Yeah, the equation is like cosine 3 to the ay equals cosine 3 to the by. And then now I have to extract an answer out of this. Uh, it's like, when, when does this have a uh, something? Well, we can ignore the switch. Uh, 
I, I I actually just don't know off my head how many roots um cosine. <laughs> you you want the number of values of cosine t theta, right? So it, it's not like the number of theta in zero to two pi. It's like the number of uh values that cosine theta can take on. Uh yes, three vt. I, I see your message. Uh. So if you say this, this gives n equals 3 to the b minus 3 to the a minus 1, assuming a is at least b, I by that. Is that right? So, cosine. Well, actually, I, I'm thinking like if I have a equals 1 and, or I guess it's possible to be positive. Ah. <sighs> Okay, if you checked it with Desmos, I'll just take your word for it because I don't want to think about this. Uh, yeah, that, that's good enough. All right, so then for answer extraction, um, B equals two. Yeah, so you need B at most six because otherwise it overflows to N equals 1,000. I think I should have suspected a trick anyways, because it's also just like, there's not that many things that are possible. Like, basically, determining whether polynomials have real roots is actually really hard. And so, like, if I replace P with like a generic polynomial, I don't think it's actually doable. Just, just not, not, not doable. Um, I, I was hoping the solution might be a little more arrows based, but trick doesn't surprise me, I guess. Oh, uh, especially given that it's like a cubic. <laughs> I call off my for honors path. All right, so let me just grade. Gives one value. Actually, I could just count values of a, right? One value of a. Because they they won't overlap, is that right? Because the ternary type things. Is that it? Does that just is that just how you extract nine five? It's three as a solution. Oh, wait. Uh, no, no, no. So, so, something's wrong. Uh, five. No, wait. What? If. For how many positive integers? Oh my god. Why would you do... Yeah, I was about to subtract it from 1,000. I was like, wait, the inequality is strict. <laughs> so 94? Is that, is that right? Yes, okay. I feel like you should have extracted by asking for like the largest n that it's possible for or something. Because I feel like even if I like solve the problem correctly, uh, I I might just like miss that a thousand is you know and strictly less than a thousand versus an at most a thousand. I think this extraction is okay too. It's just I would have just asked for like a specific large value of n. We wrote it up with x plus one over x instead of tricks up. Those are actually equivalent, right? Because if you let um. Yeah. V enhance, are you in honors math? Oh, I'm in PhD math. Is that an honors program? <laughs> but it's nice to okay, I believe that, yeah. Yeah, so x plus one over x and trig substitutions are actually equivalent. The, the polynomials that map x plus one over x to x to the n plus one over x to the n are the same as the polynomials that map cosine theta to cosine n theta. And that's basically because you can substitute x equals e to the i theta. And x plus one over x will just be two cosine theta. So anytime you see a, like an x plus one over x substitution, you can usually translate it into the same language with trig and vice versa. Um, that's also why whenever you see like the trig substitution, there's almost always a factor of two somewhere. Because actually, if you don't have the factor of two, you don't get integer coefficient polynomials. 
Any good book for algebra, Evan? I don't know if I have anything I particularly would recommend. Can I do a life solve of a whole Yusumo? Um, the answer is no, and the reason is because I have either... All the past Yusumos, I've probably done at least one of the problems on them. Actually, I think I've done every problem from every Yusumo for the last 20 years. Yeah. But also, uh, the, the current Yusumos, I see the problems in advance. However, if you want to watch, I did a test review of last year's Yusumo where I presented the solutions to all of the 2020 Yusumo problems, um, if that interests you. I don't know. Yeah, you can, you can just search, uh, search my YouTube channel and then I think you'll find it. It's just the one that has Yusumo 2020 in the title. All right, let's do 2004. How sweaty are you? It's really warm here, but the room I'm in just gets really warm and it's like really obnoxious. Uh, all right. Okay. Up. I'm so surprised I have not done this problem yet, actually. 